the agreement we had, as you know, Mario's brought up, um, and anybody that's known Pete, uh, he's owed me. He owes me money that I've let him borrow. Not that I expected to get it back, because the reasons he he needed it was food for his kid, a prescription for his kid. Hey, brother, do you got you got twenty five dollars so I can get an Uber so I I don't lose my job? And you know, there's that piece of me that hopes that's what he's using it for, because you know I'd hate to see the guy lose his job and not be able to support his family because he needed twenty five bucks. Um. So the original agreement was five to six hundred for the weekend because he owed me money. And he said, Great. He goes, uh, could you do me a favor? I said, What's that? He said, Could you send me an advance? Because I have to get my suboxone filled before I go because I can't do this weekend without it. So I sent him a hundred and he said, he messages me back. He goes, uh, yeah, that wouldn't fill the whole prescription. Can you send me any more? So I said to him, I said, let me see what I can send you tomorrow. So I sent him another hundred th uh, that Friday. And supposedly he got a Suboxone. Well, you know, I'm busy running around Friday because we're headed to Horsehead. I had to pick up Barry Horowitz at Albany International. On the way up to uh, Horsehead, I'm driving and I get a text from him. And I can see a little bit of it because I got my GPS on. It said something about stopping to grab me vodka. And I just rolled my eyes and I just ignored the message. So we get there. Uh, Barry had something to eat uh, when he got into Albany. I get to, to Horsehead. I meet Mario and Roma and PJ. Uh, it's about nine o'clock, nine nine o five. We check into the hotel. There's an outback right across the parking lot. We go over to get something to eat. Uh, first thing he orders is a double vodka. And I think he was drinking cranberry. Pounds that one. Says, "Wow, that wasn't even didn't taste like there was any vodka in it." So he gets another one. I'm thinking night before. You want a couple drinks? Fine. Next day, we get up. We go on to breakfast. Everything's great. Everybody's having a great day. We get to the venue. VIPs come in. We sign some stuff. Periodically throughout the day, he's going to the bathroom. He's going to smoke. Hello. He's gone for 45 minutes here, 45 minutes there. Later on, I find out his friend was that this, this convention was hooked to a wrestling show. So one of his friends that helped run the wrestling show, he kept going to him all day saying, come on, brother, you don't have somebody that can go get me vodka. You don't have somebody that can go get me some vodka four or five times so finally he gets one of his students to go get him some vodka so he's gone again he comes back and he's like finally I got some fucking vodka in this place and I just looked at him you know not saying nothing don't want to make an ass out of him and, and let me go on, on, on record to say number one Jack I'm this is not my style I don't go on and blast anybody I don't talk shit about anybody I try to keep this between me and him, he brought it to social media. I didn't. So that day goes on. As I said, he, he probably did. If I had to guess. Three, mm. three hours of the day of the, mm. without, you know, being missing. Um, that night we leave there. Well, first there's a wrestling show, so we stayed to try to hit some of those fans with some autographs. And he's all he sat there was, when are we leaving? When are we leaving? When are we leaving? Like scratching his legs, bent over. And I've never been an abuser of drugs, so I couldn't tell you what he was on, what he was doing. I do know he was drinking. Um, we leave there. 
we go before we leave i said to everybody where do you want to eat nobody could decide i said why don't we just do outback it's right there by the hotel you know we can walk there for christ's sakes you know so me and barry is driving with me mario roma and pj go in mario's car uh mario was nice enough to pick him up because he lives a half an hour from him so i didn't have to go all the way there and get him because uh he doesn't have a license uh, so me and barry go to the hotel uh, the restaurant we're sitting there sitting there sitting there probably a half an hour and uh Mario and Roma shows up. I'm like, where's PJ? Oh, he said he's just going to go to their Zoom. And, uh, well, on the way to the, hotel, uh, the, the restaurant, which was a five-minute drive, he had to stop to a liquor store to get vodka. Goes back to his room, drinks his meal. I'm like, his loss. Sunday morning, we get up, we go out to breakfast. We're at the restaurant. There's a little bit of a wait because it's Sunday morning. He's sitting there sweating profusely. And he goes, I can't do this. Mario, can I have your keys so I can go sit in your car? He goes down to the car. So either, either he was hung over as shit, having DDTs fucking going back out to finish his vodka, whatever, sat in the car while we ate breakfast. We get to the show, which is, once again, it's a five-minute ride from any place we were to the venue. We walk into the venue. First thing out of his mouth is, I got to go to the bathroom. Goes to the bathroom. 20, 25 minutes later, comes back. We get set up. You know, I mean, we all ended up going to the bathroom at one point or another. Uh, DJ would come back, sit there for a minute, rubbing his legs, sweating profusely, all humped over. Then he'd be gone again and again and again. And at one point, I won't say who said it to me, but they looked at me. And they looked over at his empty table and said, he's been gone for a while. And I looked at him. I said, we're at an hour and 20 right now. Now, this is the guy that fulfilled his commitment with me by showing up. So that time he was gone about an hour and 20 minutes and comes back and sits down like nothing's ever happened. You know, and. The whole event, I mean, as I said, the two days, it was probably a, a 15 hour event. If he was at his table five to six hours, that was a lot, you know. And the, you know, Mario said, uh, you know, I made the comment, I said, you know, you know, he's just not the drunkest, he's just in, in, invisible because that's what he was the whole fucking weekend, you know. I mean, I saw his empty table more than I saw him. So, at the time that we were getting ready to leave Sunday, you know, he, everything out of his mouth was, what time are we leaving? Are we getting out of here yet? What time are we getting out of here? What time are we getting out of here? This is at 2 o'clock. The event ends at 5. You know what I mean? And uh, I just kept looking at him. And, uh, well, let me back up a little bit. So, I think it was that Saturday. I'm over just talking to him. And he looks at me and goes, Hey, brother, you got any Vicodin? Now, this is the guy I sent him money for his Suboxone. And I looked at him and I said, no, I'm all out. And I shook my head and I looked at Mario and my jaw was just hanging down. And I was like, what the fuck? You know, this is a guy that's that's clean and sober and needs Suboxone, you know, because he couldn't make it through the weekend without it. And, and you're asking me for Vicodin and, and drinking, you know, fifths of fucking vodka, like, like, like they're Coca-Cola's, you know? And uh, then Sunday, as I said, we're packing up to go. He goes to the bathroom 
And instead of making an ass out of him in front of everybody, I go to the bathroom because I did have to go. And I called him in the hallway and I said to him, I said, I'll get a hold of you either tomorrow or the next day. And I'll talk about what we're going to do for pay for you. All right, brother. All right. All right. All right. So then come Monday night, I started getting a text from him about money. And uh, I really had to give it a lot of thought because, you know, last thing I want to do is screw anybody out of money. And uh, so now by Tuesday, he's really giving me the BS lines. And, you know, at one point he even said it was his wife texting me about his money. And, and finally, I just let him have it. I'm like, dude, you weren't at your table. I said, I funded you 200 bucks on a $600 weekend. If it was 600, five to $600 weekend. I said, you worked about a third of the time. I said, I think we're even. Not to mention the money. I, I, I looked and, and in the last five months, I think I've sent him about $300 that he hasn't paid me back and brother, you know, I'll get it back to you or, you know, brother, this, or Hey, take it off with, you know, the next show we do together. Or So about three days after the event, I see on Twitter that he makes a post that says, yeah, I worked the whole weekend and I, I didn't get paid for it. So I screenshot it and I send it to him and I said, listen, you got a deposit on it. I said, you weren't at your table the whole time. You're at your table about a third of the time you were supposed to be there. I said, if you want to take this to social media, I said, which, you know, I hope you don't want to. I said, with your track record, I said, and I got three people that were with us. That's would tell a totally different story than what you're telling. I said, take it to social media and, and, and we can blow it up or we can move on from this. I said, you know, I said, you have demons. I said, you need to take care of your demons. I wish you nothing but the best, but I'm done with you. So he continues to blow up my phone, blow up my phone, 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. So finally I have to block him. So then he starts sending me messages on instant messenger on Facebook and I'm just ignoring him. I'm not even paying attention to him. So he sends me one and I was just like, look at, I said, I'm done with you, dude. I said, the money I've given you, I said, consider it your fucking pay. Cause I'm done with you. You know, I, it's done. It's over with. Don't cock not talk to me no more. It's over with. And like I was telling you before we even got on here live today, he messaged me again and was like, oh, come on, brother. You need to pay me at least fair for what I did, you know, but he didn't want to do a fair job. If I go to my job, like Mario said, and it's slow and I jump in my car and I go to Walmart, my boss ain't going to pay me for being at work. You know, I mean, I, I've. I've worked with this guy probably for the last three or four years, and I'm probably about the only guy in the Northeast that, that would book him because I was trying to help him. 